Netflix sci-fi movies have just been getting hammered by the critics for a while now. We had Bright, Cloverfield Paradox, Mute. Critics have hated all these. Altered Carbon, okay critical response. So that's a TV show, not a movie. So I was curious if this was going to break the trend and critics were going to like it. Now they didn't. And I didn't mind it. I thought it was pretty cool. Now, simple premise. We have the world overpopulation. I liked how they got the right projected population. So in 2050, it's projected that there's going to be 10 billion people. So they got that, that little detail right. That was cool. And to deal with this overpopulation and other problems, rather than terraforming other planets and other moons, they're going to instead try to change people and change people at a fundamental DNA level so that people are able to live in these different environments. No, I actually think this is a really cool idea. Now, there's a famous kind of philosophical aphorism that yesterday I was, I was foolish, I tried to change the world, today I'm wise, I tried to change myself. So some interesting philosophical ideas there and something I haven't seen explored in a movie before. Now the moon in the movie they talk about colonizing is Titan. It's one of Saturn's moons and there is real talk about this being a potential for colonization. Now much farther away than our moon, Mars, so why would it be even considered when it would take so much more effort to get there? The main reason is one of the big problems with colonizing the moon or Mars is this space radiation that has really corrosive effects and we don't deal with it on Earth because we have an atmosphere that pr protects us, but on different planets like Mars or the moon this radiation, even um, for people to go to Mars, just for a brief time, they worry about this radiation a lot. So as far as any kind of permanent living settlement, the radiation would just be a killer. So they've talked about having an underground colony on Mars or the moon. But then a lot of the reasons we want to go to Mars or the moon, having an underground colony would defeat the purpose. And it begs the question, why not just build an underground colony here? If, if we're going to build an underground colony, it's much easier to build one here. So the main advantage of going to Titan is it has this thick atmosphere that this space radiation isn't as damaging. However, then it, there's another problem. This is why probably it's not taken seriously as a colonization idea. The time it would take to get to Titan is very, very long. And as you're, as you're going to Titan and whatever, whatever spacecraft you're using, that radiation, that space radiation is, is, is attacking you. And like I say, it doesn't take that much to really cause serious effects. So on such a long journey, they would have to find some way to, to create an atmosphere or something to block the space radiation on the journey itself. Once you get to Titan, then the atmosphere would protect you. But right now, we don't really know how to, how to get there without the space radiation causing serious problems. So in the movie, the main character is one of these soldiers who is undergoing these experiments to go to Titan. Now, he's played by Sam Worthington. He's the main guy from Avatar. He was in Clash of the Titans. I have mixed feelings about him. I think he is a bit, a bit boring, a bit wooden, not the most dynamic actor, but I think in a movie like Avatar, where there's so much spectacle and stuff going on around him, he can be this nice kind of anchor, this, this stoic, noble figure that's kind of a foil to the, to the craziness going on around him. I didn't like him as much in Clash of the Titans, so here it's a mixed bag when there's crazy stuff going on and this, this, these transformations and you're talking about aliens and other planets. He can be a nice kind of human center, but when the movie's a bit slower and there's kind of the slower, more boring moments, you really want your lead to be more dynamic, be more charismatic, and carry the film. And I feel like he struggles a lot there, and when the film around him isn't particularly interesting, he doesn't do a lot to make it interesting himself. Now, one thing I really liked about this movie is it got at the idea of how much can you change something? In this case, human beings. How much can you change a human being before they stop being human and before they become a new thing altogether? So what does it mean to be human? And oftentimes, maybe at first, at, at a service level, we would think having a body, having a human body would be very important. But really, when you dig right down, that's probably the least important aspect of considering someone human. I think if you had a, a human consciousness and you found some way to transfer it to a dog or a robot or, or even a computer, most people would say as long as there's a human consciousness, memories of the past, desires, wants, dreams, they would say that's just as human as someone with a body. So it's interesting you see these physical transformations on someone's body, um, but does that really make them make them any less human? And then we get the interesting parallel where as, a, as an individual, if you care about immortality and you want to live forever, you got to think, well, if I transfer my consciousness into a robot or I become a cyborg at one point, Am I still technically living, but in some sense, I've died in another sense of the word. I'm no longer human like I was at the beginning. And as a species, eventually the sun is going to swallow the earth and humans won't be around anymore. So 
the species isn't really immortal either. And if we wanted to be immortal, the human species, we'd have to find a way to colonize other planets eventually and move throughout space. And there's the question of how much could we change humans and change our DNA to live in all these different environments and in some sense still be the same species we were at the beginning. And then I think a lot of people read into this movie as a kind of metaphor for how we sometimes treat soldiers, making them do these, these missions, sending them into these dangerous environments, and in some sense, oftentimes there is there is a kind of loss of humanity and then how we how we view them so the the general who's who's pushing the protagonist to to do these experiments he fills his head with all these these lofty ideals like oh you're you're a martyr you're you're saving the world but really you see how after he starts transforming how they view him how the how the soldiers view him with such fear and suspicion and otherness and he's now a foreigner and a freak and dangerous a potential weapon or an investment they only see him rather than a human life being lost they would say look at all the money we pumped into this research if he dies so just such a twisted twisted thing where someone who who makes a sacrifice and undergoes this for the good of the world as soon as they do it, unfortunately, how you view them now is with fear and fear and terror. And now I'm going to talk about some stuff that happened towards the end of the movie. So if you don't want anything spoiled, stop watching. So I really like the scene where we see the, the person in charge of this research saying, I, I made him, I own him, I can do whatever I want. And it's you understand that when you feel like you created something and you have this kind of ownership over it, it can lead to great self-sacrifice on your part and protectiveness and all these on all these great things. But it can also lead to this sense of, real mistreatment and the feeling that you can do anything with it and you get this kind of god complex that well i brought it into this world it's kind of my right to do whatever i want with it and do with it as i see fit and then i also i really like the last scene we get of of him looking over this new planet kind of like adam over the top of the mountain looking over the the history of humanity and then the flying was really really cool and it was interesting actually because the gravity is different on titan you could fly if you had little mini wings like like he had. So I thought that was a great scene. Now I won't say this was a great movie, and it was pretty it was pretty slow. It, it, it's not something that's gonna blow you away, but I thought explored some really cool concepts. Will get you thinking, and had some really awesome scenes, in particular that last one. But a lot of the scenes of him going through the transformation, great costume design, great visuals. So I don't think it was that bad a movie at all.